Matter of the day, the, this is related to the death of Mr Harry Gregg, OBE. Claire Sugden has been given leave to make a statement on the death of Mr Harry Gregg, OBE, which fulfils the criteria set out in Standing Order 24. If other members wish to be called, they should do so by rising in their places and continuing to do so. All members called will have up to three minutes to speak on the subject. I would remind members that I will not take any points of order on this or any other matter until at least this item of business has uh, concluded. I call on Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. <coughs> today we mourn the passing of Harry Gregg, OBE, who passed peacefully today, surrounded by family. I wish to offer my sincere condolences to his wife Carolyn, his family, friends and fans across the world. Leading tributes today, Sir Alex Ferguson described him as a man of great character and a true legend. Harry was our hero in so many ways. He was a hero on the football pitch, unrivaled. When he had the ball, it was safe in his hands, much to the dismay of the opposing side. In 1957, he was the world's most expensive goalkeeper and voted best a year later. He made 25 appearances for Northern Ireland. He dominated the Nets, both in stature and talent. He was a reluctant hero. Following the 1958 Munich air disaster over 60 years ago, he bravely rescued teammates and passengers, including a young baby. He put aside his own life to save others. People live today because of Harry Gregg. Harry didn't want to talk too often about the tragedy, but it was very clear that he carried the trauma all of his days. He was the hero of Munich, but the name gave him no comfort. He's an inspirational hero. Harry's legend is without doubt, and long before he passed. When others sought to immortalise him in a sculpture, he spoke with unfiltered honesty against the idea and rather advocated for a foundation which aimed to inspire young people so that they might follow their dreams as Harry was able to follow his. The Harry Gregg Foundation, which attracts hundreds of children and young people to this day, weekly, is his legacy. Harry was full of character. His height and lean straight frame, and usually hat, give him such presence. I met him on a number of occasions his candid conversations, sharp wit, and incredible stories made him the best company. He talked about football and his family. He dearly loved his family, and I know they will sorely feel his loss today and in the days ahead. While incredibly humble, he was quietly proud of all his achievements. I know some here have visited his home outside Castle Rock, and it's a sight to behold, Mr. Speaker, a private collection of global football history. Harry was a Coleraine man, born in Tobermore and raised on the band side, gave him his most distinctive and formidable quality. Despite his success, his fame, his famous friends, he was one of us. And to us, Harry Gregg, OBE, is a legend in every sense of the world. But to him, he was Harry Gregg of 34 Windsor Avenue, Coleraine, a husband, father and grandfather and now a red devil in heaven. Rest easy, Harry, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, and I call it Morris Bradley. In Ireland and Manchester United goalkeeper, Harry Gregg, who passed away on Sunday evening at the age of 87. Harry passed away peacefully in the Causeway Hospital, surrounded by his loving family. Harry survived the 1958 Munich air crash and was often referred to as the hero of Munich after pulling passengers and teammates from the burning wreckage, including uh, Bobby Charlton and Dennis Violet. It was a tragedy in which 23 people died. Harry Gregg was a member of Sir Matt Busby's team of talented youngsters who were nicknamed the Busby Babes. Harry had joined them from Doncaster Rovers for a then world, re uh, world record fee for a goalkeeper of £23,000. On that fateful night, on February 6, 1958, the plane carrying the team back from Belgrade crashed in a blizzard after refuelling at Munich. Greg secured across, sorry, United were returning from a European game 
when the airplane they were travelling crashed while attempting to take off on the slush-covered runway. He escaped the burning wreckage, but went back in and brought Vera Lukic, the pregnant wife of a Yugoslav diplomat, and her young daughter, Vesna, to safety. He also attended Matt Busby and fellow Northern Ireland international Jackie Blanchflower. In an age where the word hero and legend are banded about loosely, Harry was a true legend and a true hero. Not only was Harry a legend at Manchester United, where he kept 48 clean sheets during his nine years at Old Trafford, Greg also starred for Northern Ireland at the World Cup in Sweden in 1958, helping Northern Ireland reach the quarterfinals, and he was named goalkeeper of the tournament. Harry used to tell me that had Peter Doherty, the manager, registered himself to play in that competition, that they could have gone on and possibly won it. That was so, so high a regard he had for Peter Doherty. Harry was awarded the MBE in 1955, 1995, followed by an OBE in 2019. He was a straight talker. He told you as, as he saw it. I spoke with him for the last time on Thursday. He recalled a visit he had had from Martin Foster as First Minister as one of his fondest memories. I loved listening to Harry, especially when he started to recount his football stories. He described them in such detail that you would nearly believe you were actually there. He uh, was a marvellous man to listen to, and I enjoyed his company. I would like to continue with a quote from Harry from 2008. I am Henry Gregg, 34 Windsor Avenue, who played football, who was useful at it on good days and rubbish at it on bad days. That's what I want to be remembered for, not something that happened on the spur of the moment. Harry will long be remembered for his love and passion for the game. He enjoyed watching young players coming through his foundation, the Harry Gregg Foundation. Uh, if, I, if I could explain the, the width and the breadth of that foundation, there are players there from Ballymena, Antrim, Dungiven, Limavari, all over the northwest and northeast of the province to come down to Corian to take part in the Harry Gregg Foundation every Saturday morning. It's a treat to watch. That is what Harry would like to be remembered for, his belief and passion for the game, the beautiful game as he described it. And I would extend my deepest sympathy and all our sympathies to his wife, Carolyn, son, John, daughters, immediate family and extended family circle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And I call Keeva Archibald. Um, I want to extend my deepest condolences to the family and friends of a sporting legend, Harry Gregg, who, has died, who died last night. Being from Coleraine and from a family of United fans, I grew up knowing about Harry Gregg and his story has inspired many from the local area as well as across the world. Harry's playing career started at Windsor Park Swifts and he enjoyed spells at Linfield and Coleraine before moving to Doncaster Rovers at only the age of 18. However, it was his record-breaking transfer um, for a goalkeeper at that time of £23,000 to Manchester United that enabled Harry to showcase his talent and as one of the Busby babes, Harry cemented his reputation as one of the best goalkeepers in the world, keeping 48 clean sheets in 247 appearances during one of the club's most successful periods. Harry survived the Munich air disaster in 1958, showing great bravery by returning to the plane to rescue teammates and other passengers, including a pregnant woman and small child. He returned to play only two weeks after the crash and kept a clean sheet. He then went on to play for Northern Ireland in the 1958 World Cup, reaching the quarterfinals, and he was voted the best goalkeeper in the tournament. His legacy will live on through the Harry Gregg Foundation, which was founded in 2015, and continues to help inspire young people get involved in football and engage in an active lifestyle. My deepest sympathies go to Harry's family and friends, Arjes J. Gora and Anne Mills. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I call John Dallet? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I was in a privileged position that I was a member of Coleraine Council for over 30 years. And if I was to highlight uh, if I was to be asked to highlight uh, one of the greatest events, it was to meet Harry Gregg. I'm not into sport big time, but I'm into sporting people who have made a huge contribution uh, to this world. His sporting achievements, of course, have been well documented. His heroism at Munich is known the world over. And the fact that he came from Windsor Avenue a working class area 
of Corain makes me particularly proud. Harry Gregg was a working class man. And all through the most difficult years of the trouble, he was well above the, the kind of uh, uh, unsettled state that we survived in. My deepest sympathy to his family and to his friends. Windsor Avenue has lost a hero. Coleraine has lost an icon. And I think the world has lost someone who was very special. Very special not just to Manchester United and Northern Ireland, but to the people as a whole. And I believe that is one of the reasons why Harry Gregg today stands in the elevated position he does. He was above politics, he was above sport, and he made a huge contribution to this world. Thank you. I call Mike Nesbitt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm, I'm not going to pretend I was some sort of bosom pal of, of Harry Gregg's, but I did have the honour and the pleasure, in equal measures, of meeting him a few times, most recently in a visit to his home outside Castle Rock with a small number of people, uh, one of whom was Liam Beckett. Uh, and if you know Liam and you knew Harry, uh, you'll understand that after a, a rather prom promising start when I got out the full word, hello, uh, it was something of a challenge to insert a third syllable into the next two hours of conversation. Uh, Joe Taggart was there that day, and I heard him on the BBC this morning say Harry would be very cross if we started with Munich rather than concentrating uh, on his football career. And what a career that was. Of course, we think of George Best as our greatest, but let's not underestimate that Harry Gregg became the most expensive goalkeeper in the history of world football when Manchester United brought him uh, to Old Trafford from Doncaster. And time after time, he showed us why, not just for his club, but also uh, for his country. Earlier today, Sammy McElroy, the last of the Busby babes, said he had the courage and the bravery of a lion. And in the 1958 World Cup Finals, he was voted goalkeeper of the tournament, outperforming the great Russian Lev Yashin, who many still believe to be the greatest goalkeeper of all time. As somebody lucky enough to have commentated on Northern Ireland the other two times they made World Cup Finals, uh, it's easy to forget that of the three, the 58 squad was probably the best. They made the quarterfinals of the World Cup in Sweden, a squad that included some of Northern Ireland's all-time greatest. Greg himself, of course, Bertie Peacock, Peter McParlin, Jimmy McElroy, Billy Bingham, and Danny Blanchflower. The FIFA All-Star team of the tournament in 1958 contained six Brazilians, two Frenchmen, a Swede and two Northern Irishmen in the best team in the world, Harry Gregg and Danny Blanchflower. Blanchflower, whose brother Jackie was one of the Manchester United players that Harry Gregg saved in Munich just a few months before. Only a fool would do what I did, said Harry Gregg. But that belies a fundamental about him, a fundamental identified by George Best who said, on that occasion, it wasn't just an act of courage, it was acts of goodness. Harry Gregg was a very good man. I can think of no country in the world which would not rejoice in saying he was a son of this country. So our condolences to his family, to his friends, and to all his admirers, many of whom never knew him, never saw him play, but respect him nonetheless. A good man, Mr. Speaker, has gone. Thank you. And I call Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise on behalf of the Alliance Party to pay tribute to the legendary Northern Ireland and Manchester United goalkeeper Harry Gregg. First and foremost, I offer my sincere condolences, thoughts and prayers to the Gregg family and hope that the tributes paid in the Assembly today go some way to offer some comfort for their loss. Harry Gregg was a member of the legendary Manchester United Busby Babes, playing 247 times for the club and part of a rich heritage of Northern Irish men who have graced the theatre of dreams. 
He also played 25 times for Northern Ireland and, as been mentioned, was a star of the 1958 World Cup, voted best goalkeeper and a side captain by Danny Blanchfleur that reached the quarterfinals of the competition. He will be remembered for his bravery during the Munich air disaster when he courageously and without second thought helped rescue teammates and survivors from the wreckage. But as has been mentioned here today, Mr. Speaker, Harry's reluctance to accept the rec recognition he receives for this act gives some insight into the humility and humanity of the man and indeed his determination to ensure that this tragic accident did not define his life or the lives of his teammates. Mr. Speaker, I think he can proudly recognise that he achieved that aim, forever recognised as one of the greatest goalkeepers in the history of the beautiful game, loved by his family. Harry Gregg was an inspiration on and off the football pitch to so many. Thank you. Thank you. And I call Jim Allister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Northern Ireland has been blessed with many sporting giants in not just football, but in many disciplines. But towering among them, undoubtedly, is Harry Gregg. And all that has been said to him today in terms of tribute is well deserved for his sporting achievements alone. But of course, it's not just his triumph on the football field that made him the memorable son of this land of whom we're all proud. It was also his triumph in the adversity of the Munich airfield, where he showed the selfless courage that most of us could only dream about, where with no thought to his own safety, but thinking only of those in great peril, he conducted himself in such a way that ensured that some people lived who otherwise would have died out of that Munich disaster. And many of us, I suspect all of us maybe in this chamber, have no recollection of the Munich disaster because it happened so long ago. And yet it is embedded in the consciousness of us all. Why? Because of Harry Gregg. It was that selfless uh, behavior, that heroic behavior, that made Harry Gregg one of whom we are all so proud, not just for his sporting prowess, for what, but also for what he did uh, on that occasion. And yet through all that, as the House has heard, he was a man of immense modesty, self-effacing uh, and looking nowhere for glory. And a man whom I only met him once or twice, but it was a privilege to meet with him and to be in the presence of someone who so earned the respect of this country and someone for whom we're all so glad that he was indeed a son of Northern Ireland. He was one of us. He, came to, he lived amongst us. He came from us. He never forgot and was very proud of his roots and so anxious to remind us all quite properly of where he came from. There were no errors and graces. He was straight up and down, straight forward, exactly the typical sort of Osterman that personifies much of the greatness of this province. And so I add in the expressions of sympathy and condolence to his family, to his many friends, and he will be much missed, but not forgotten. Thank you. I thank you, and I call George Robinson. Mr. Speaker, first and foremost, can I express my sincere sympathy to the family of local football legend Harry Gregg, OBE. It is with huge sadness that I learned of the passing of a man who can only be described as a legend and a hero. I consider it a huge privilege to have known Harry personally and his passion for his hometown, hometown Coleraine Football Club 
who ironically won the League Cup the night before his untimely death. Although Harry is much too modest a man to call himself a hero, this is simply the truth. During the awful events at Munich, which robbed the world of fut football of some of its rising stars, Harry Gregg put his own safety aside to try to rescue friends and colleagues. For me, this has labelled Harry a hero, even if he did not want that title. In the years after Harry became a legend to the Manchester United team, he was a hero most of all in his Northern Ireland home. He never saw himself as anything but Harry Gregg, and this is what made him such a special individual. While it will be his family who will miss him the most, I hope it will be of comfort to them to know how greatly appreciated Harry was as an individual throughout Northern Ireland and far beyond. Today Northern Ireland has lost a gentleman, sporting hero and inspiration, but through the Harry Gregg Foundation his name will live long in his native land, concluded Mr Robinson. Again, my deepest sympathy to all his family. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you, and I call Sinead Ellis. Gormoigat, Can Corlier, and thanks to, to Claire Shubden uh, for bringing this today to give us the opportunity to pay tribute to Harry. Um, as a Man United fan, I, I too feel a, a sense of loss today, and I want to extend my deepest sympathies to the family and friends of Harry Gregg. Harry played for United um, during arguably one of their most uh, successful periods in the club, club's history, and he is considered one of the club's best ever keepers. Despite his talent, though, um, as members have alluded to, Harry will always be remembered as one of the unsung heroes of the infamous Munich Air disaster. And following the, the horrendous events of that ill-fated Ill journey, Harry set about pulling people from the wreckage without a thought for his own, his own safety. And we've heard um, other members uh, allude to the fact that he, he rescued the pregnant mother um, and, and her, her other child, who he later met up with um, in, in, in later years. Um, and Harry also uh, rescued the, the great Bobby Charlton, um, Jackie Blatchford, um, and also um, his manager, uh, Matt Busby, who was seriously injured. So by any standards, Harry Gregg was a hero, but he never sought any recognition for this and was a very private, extraordinarily ordinary person. He was a hero who wanted to be, to, to be remembered for football. And George Best, Best summed Harry up when he said, bravery is one thing, but what Harry did was, more, was about more than bravery. It was about goodness. And Harry Gregg was a good person. I now, now call Justin McNulty. Gurma August, come Carla. Harry Gregg was a sporting icon. So much more than a sporting icon, a sporting man. He was a man of great dignity, humility and strength. A family man touched by personal tragedy as well. The loss of his first wife and his daughter through cancer. Harry was a Busby babe. And I'm a GA man. But in my formative years, I was also a Man U fan. I grew up admiring such players as Sammy McElroy, Mal Donaghy, and others, and their, their exploits with Northern Ireland in Mexico 86. And Sammy McElroy recently, or today, said that Harry was a man of bravery, the bra of, a man of the, with the bravery of a lion on and off the pitch. A man who, in 1958, climbed back into a burning aircraft in an effort to try and save his teammates' lives. And although Harry was a reluctant hero, what he did that night in Munich says everything you need to know about the man. Rest in peace, Harry, and condolences with his family, friends, and fans. Okay, members, that concludes uh, the matters of the day. Moving on, the next uh, item on the first item on the order paper is a motion regarding committee membership. As with other similar motions, it will be treated as a business.